The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Was it? Praise you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And jo so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph too went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and family of David to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child. <laughs>
Now there were shepherds in that region, living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Messiah and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts, with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
how perfect on this feast of the Immaculate Conception to feast right there on what the Immaculate Conception enabled to happen. God with us. Angels singing glory to God in the highest. And people of all lands growing to adore our newborn king. How perfect on this feast of the Immaculate Conception of Mary to give honor to God. Eating is so vital to life. And indeed, that's the positive way the church calls us together on these feast days, that we could feast to being filled with good news, the good news of God's saving love for us. In our early readings tonight, we heard of the fall of man, humanity turning their back on God's love. And through the unfolding of salvation history, we continue to hear that God pursuing humanity, making possible restoration through Jesus. My friends, today on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, we're here to celebrate God's saving of Mary. Even before Jesus was born in time. It's a mystery. It's all God's grace. Today we celebrate the birth of Mary, the conception of Mary in the womb of her parents, Joachim and Anne. She who was conceived without sin, and she was prevented from sin, even the stain of original sin, by God's grace. It's called prevenient grace. God operates outside of time. He prepared the way for the coming of Jesus. He prepared the way for Mary to be able to say yes to the angel Gabriel years later at the Annunciation. What a beautiful thing to feast on. I hope that makes sense, that any Feast of Mary magnifies the work of God through Jesus, Mary's own words. And then there's always the so what. That's great that that happens. And the so what for us, of course, is that just as Mary is our first disciple, God desires us to have the same experience of allowing Jesus to be born in each of us. And so although we were not saved in advance from the stain of original sin, we're reminded today, we're invited to feast on a reminder of the knowledge that through our baptism, we are washed clean from the stain of original sin. And we are offered life in Christ, that he might dwell in us. And even if we might still have a gravitation to sin, we're reminded that God continues to pursue us and offer us salvation again and again and again, unlimited through the sacrament of reconciliation. Just as he first offered to Mary that Jesus might be born to the world, so he continues to pour out grace for each of us that Jesus might continue to be born in each of us. What a beautiful thing to feast on. And when we are filled to overflowing, what a beautiful gift for us to take to the world and invite others to join us each week to sing glory to God in the highest.